Who believes everything that they read on the media? <laughs> no one. Who believes that everything that is written in the Bible is true? That's very good. Um, my message today is being set apart for a special work. It is inspired by Jeremiah 1 verse 5 that says that before I made you in your mother's womb, I knew you, I chose you, I set you apart for a specific work. A lot of times as human beings, we tend to ask ourselves a lot of questions, why? I've recently read an article that shows that on average, people spend 40% of their time working. The study further shows that the other 30% they spend sleeping. <laughs> so it means that the other 30% is left for certain things. On the same article, it says that people are most likely to die of a heart attack on Mondays. <laughs> and then it further stipulates that um, they are more likely to die of heart attack between 9 and 8. So that was quite very strange for me. I tried to check what could be the significance of it, what could be the cause. It turns out that most of the time on Monday, people are going back to work. <laughs> also between eight and nine, most people are going to work. It means that they go to the work that they hate. I came across another article that was part of reference to that. It basically says that most people, over 90% believe that their, their work, the work that they do, it's not fulfilling for them. They don't feel empowered, they don't feel that they contribute. They think that if they can get the job that they want, they can actually become better, they can actually contribute much better. It's very shocking because considering the fact that most of our time it's at work, it means that if we are miserable at work, our lives become a misery. And this also came from the way I grew up as well. When I was growing up as a young boy, I thought that if I go to high school, um, I will be happy. <laughs> and then I went to high school, I was not happy. And then when I was doing matric, I was looking forward to go to tertiary. And I told myself that if I go to tertiary, I will be much more happy. And then I went in there, I realized that I was not happy. <laughs> and one of the next thing was that if I just get the work that I want, I will be happy. By the time I got the job, I realized that I was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> and then while working, I thought that if I get married, <laughs> I will be very happy. In that process, I realized that happiness is not necessarily the next stage. It is about the choice that you make. And I realized that for the better part of my life, I did not live, live my life the way I should have been because I've always focused on the end goal. The question of work is a very important question. In Ecclesiastes 3 verse 9, Solomon asked this question, what do people get for all their hard work? Unfortunately, he did not provide an answer. But majority of people believe that we work only for one motivation. We work so that we can provide our basic needs. But the Bible has other five essential purposes in order, in hierarchical order. And those other purposes have got implications in our life. So today we will go through those implications. You see, I believe that our lives unfolds like a movie. 
So it goes through different stages. If you are watching a movie at the start, you do not necessarily cannot, you can predict what will happen based on who the main character is. But if you come and watch the movie in the middle, most of the time you will not be able to predict because you will not necessarily know who the main character is. It is our life that works that way. I believe that this is through my understanding of the Bible. I think that sometimes people will say to you, life is a marathon. I believe that life is about four things. I believe that life is a test which God continuously tests us. I believe that life is a trust which depends on who we trust most in life. Life is obedience, which means that you obey the person or the some, something that you trust most. And most importantly, I believe that life is a special assignment. So it basically means that you get to live for a certain time after that you die. And the question of what happens in between when you live and when you die depends on who you trust most. It depends on what happens during the process when you get tested. I'll move into those six purposes of work. The first one is very much simple. We work to meet our needs. I believe that work is a channel that God uses to meet our needs. So God will supply us through the work. It's very scriptural. In 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10, in simple plain language, it says that whoever, doesn't wa whoever that doesn't want to work should not be allowed to eat. It's just basic as that. A lot of people have been asking questions to say, do we really have to work? Is it really scriptural? In fact, work appears first in Genesis 2 verse 15. It says that God created everything and everything was not functioning because there was no human beings to work. It means that God is always at work. It means that we will always be at work. It means that even when we die, we will continue to work. <laughs> The second reason for work is identity. And this is very much important because if you don't understand that firstly you need to provide your needs, you move into the next level of identity. God has given each one, each one, every one of us a specific shape. When I say shape, I'm referring to our spiritual gifts. I'm referring to our hearts, the things that we are passionate about. I'm talking about our abilities, the things that we are good at. I am talking about our personalities, how we are, who we are, how we do things. I am talking about experiences that we gained in life. There is a verse in Romans that says that everything else works together for good. So the way you are, you are shaped in such a way that you need to fit in and make a difference in a specific market. All those things, we need to use them to bring honor and glory to God. With that in mind, work should be a place for us to show our creativity. Work should be a place for us to make a difference based on what we were naturally gifted with and serve. It basically means that the best work for every individual should be the work that allows those people to become themselves. If you are in a position where you are working and you are not tapping into your talent, the things that you are naturally born with, most people, you will tend to be frustrated because this is not what you were made to do. I believe that one of the worst things that happened to mankind was quite a lot of cultures. We are taught to fit into a certain structure. We are taught to fit into specific systems. I'll give an example with the education system. When you study, they rate you based on, for an example, they'll say this is an A student, this, will, this is a B student. And when I got to work, I realized that this is the same system that they use in the manufacturing process to determine how good a product is. But every person is unique, so you cannot use the same standard. You cannot judge the intelligence of a person based on their ability to do numbers, if they are not supposed to be doing numbers. So 
it means that if you find yourself in a situation where you are supposed to conform to a certain things, you will tend to struggle, you will be more frustrated, your life will not be fulfilling. Some of you are given skills and abilities to care. It means that some of you can be caregivers. Some of you are the best cooks here. Some of you are the best teachers. And a lot of times it's because our culture has shaped us to conform into a specific thing. When you grow up, they, they, they teach you to say, uh, you need to go and find or study something that will give you more economic benefit. And this thing goes back to why over 90% of people don't feel fulfilled, simply because they have lost their gift. They have lost what they've been born to do. What will happen if, how will you know if the job that you do or the work that you do is what you were born to do? According to the Bible, you will be successful at it. You will be fruitful at it. You will, be, uh, you, you will get joy doing it. So if you are not getting all of those things, it means that this is not the job for you. In simple terms, the job that you should be doing is the one that you are more passionate about, that you can actually do without getting paid, and then you do it great with least amount of effort. If you find yourself in a situation where you don't get any of those things that I mentioned, sooner or, sooner or later you will realize that the meaning is much more important than money. Someone might say, I am in that place where my job does not fit what I was made for. My job does not fit who I am. What should I do? Fortunately, the same person that asked the same question came up with a verse. It is in 11, chapter 11, verse 6. It says that, so you are sit in the morning. Keep busy during the day because you don't know which seed will grow. It basically means that once you've identified your gift, you need to use it in the morning until such time that it outweighs the income that you get from the job that you do. It is very difficult because it means that you might need to take extra lessons. It means that you might need to go back and study part-time. It means that you might need to um, uh, adjust your life to make sure that you are able to balance in between. Proverbs 18, verse 16, says that your gift will make a room for you. So God knows that each one of us have got a gift. And what is the value of the gift if you don't unwrap it? It's not a gift. Jesus Christ reminds us in Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30, that a time is coming when we will stand before God and we will have to give a personal account of what we did with what he gave us. And the test here is not how much money we made. It's what we did with what he has given us. And what is it that God gave us? He gave us gifts, spiritual gifts. He gave us passion for certain things. He gave us ability to do certain things. He gave us personalities. He gave us different experience that we went through in life. This will be the test that we will have to pass when we get to heaven. The third purpose for work is maturity. This is the most important of them all because this is the transition between becoming better in life and living a happy life and not making it at all. We work so that we can build character and become mature. You will realize that in workplace, you, you will work with the most difficult people. Sometimes your boss might be horrible. If it's not your boss, it can be one of the colleagues that just irritate you. And it happened consistently that way. If it's not at work, it will be at school. So everywhere, every environment that you are in, there is that specific person that makes your life so difficult. And the question is why? And the answer is simple. 
God is using the environment that we are in to build us. He's using the environment that we are in so that we can become better. I call that environment an environment where the fertilizing happens. A workplace is a test testing ground where we test ourselves, the type of relationship that we have with God. If you are in an environment where there is a lot of fear, where there is a lot of um, darkness, it means that God wants to put you there as a part of a test that will determine whether you completely trust in him or whether you are becoming mature or not. And once you fail the test, unfortunately, you will have to retake it, just like in life. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, God is more interested in who we become rather than the career that we become. So it is very much important to understand that in that workplace, in that space that you are in, there is a certain fertilizing that happens. One of the advantages of growing up in a village, you get to understand what makes certain things to work. And I'll give an example with the wheat. A wheat doesn't need fertilizers to grow, it grows anywhere. So it can grow on a pavement, it can grow anywhere. But if you want to plant something that has got a significant value, you have to do quite a lot of work, you have to fertilize it. And unfortunately, the same way that we fertilize, I'm not sure if there are people that knows what makes fertilizers. It's the same thing that happens in the workplace. The people that give you grief, the, the people that makes your life difficult each and every day, what they're basically doing is they are fertilizing you. And the question is, do you see it as a fertilizer or do you see it as a dead? If something falls on the ground, depending on what constitute that thing. It can either become a debt or it becomes a fertilizer. So some people might call it a soil, but I call it a fertilizer because in order for a seed to become something, it has to go underground. And this is where the most important part of life happens. In James 1 verse 1, it says that the problems that we face are opportunities for us to grow and mature. It says that when we go through those things, we, might get, we must get excited because it means that God cares about us in such a way that he wants to move us from this point to this point. And the question is, how would you become excited when you go through difficult time? And the answer is because you know who God is. Because if you know who God is, you know that he will not put you in a situation where is not where you are not where you will not be able to cope. The type of job that we choose to do has got eternal implications on us. Each and every day we have to ask ourselves, what will I become? What's in my character that God wants to develop and put into use for his purpose? Remember, like I showed you in a video, the end of the video is not here on earth. All of us are going to die and there's another life which we call eternity, and we're going to live forever. So what we are doing now is just a practice. So depending on how good we are in practice, it will determine how good we will be in eternity. And God will use whatever we did here to give us certain things that we need to do long after we die. Our goal should be what Matthew says in Matthew 25, verse 21, that after having done everything else, he should say, well done, good, faithful servant. You have handled small things well. God is concerned about who we are. And what we do is much more important than our careers. God uses our workplace to build our character. He plants seeds in our lives so that the fertilizing can happen where we spend most of our time at, which is in our workplace. Work is a preparation for eternity. You see, while we are working, God is working on us. I would like to go to Psalm 105, verse 19. It says that until that time came to fulfill his dream, the Lord tested Joseph's character. 
if you don't really know who Joseph is, Joseph was a small boy who had a dream to become one of the greatest leaders. His life was not very good. He was sold by his brothers. He ended up in Egypt. He was a slave. He was, a, he was in prison for some of the things that he did not do. And this verse specifically says that this is how God tested him. So God is in a business of testing us. The next purpose for work is for us to build credibility, is for us to become witness to others. Our life is a litmus test. The way we do things shows us who we really are. And when we fail this test, we get to take it over and over again. God is not going to condone us into the next grade. So we shouldn't just go through things in life. Our goal should be to grow out of it quickly. So a lot of people will say, I am going through stuff. The chances are if you don't grow, if you don't grow through them, you are going to go through them again. And unfortunately, this is the reality of life. So every time when you go through something, ask yourself, what growth did it bring? Because if you have not get any lesson or any growth, the likelihood is that you, are, you will have to retake more or less the same issue. The way we do our work can open up opportunities to tell our story, to share what Jesus has done for us. It is our work that demonstrates what we believe in. In 2 Corinthians verse 6, chapter 6, verse 3, it says that as believers, our, God, our work gets validated all the time. It means that every day when we come to collective, when we like, people are watching us. In hard times, in tough times, in bad times, they look at how we handle certain things. They look if we do things different from them. They look if we are going to crack under pressure. They look if we are going to scream at people because we are frustrated. And when they see something unique about us in terms of how we handle ourselves during those difficult times, they want to be interested in who God is in our lives. So this is the most important part of it as well. Because if we don't get it right, we will not be representing our Lord Jesus Christ in the right way. So each and every time that we do something, we need to understand that we are doing it as a representative of God. In Colossians 3 verse 17, it says that everything that we do, we must do it as a representative of God. We are a living Bible to many people. In a workplace, there are people that have never read a Bible before. Therefore, the choices that we make, how we conduct ourselves, how we behave, should be a reflection of our faith in Christ. It is very much important because when we behave in a different way, that is not acceptable. We don't represent God in the right light. The fifth one is generosity and charity. We work so that we can help those in need. It's written in the Bible. We need to work for higher purpose. Like I said in a movie, if you know that the end result is for us to go to eternity, it means that we need to be interested in the things that God is interested in. And God is interested in being more generous. God is more generous. He loved us in such a way that he gave us his only son. This is how generous he is. It means, therefore, that we must also be concerned about his kingdom. When we put God first in everything that we do, all other things get provided for. So we need to invest in eternity. Ephesians 4 verse 28 says that use your hands for hard work and then give generously to those in need. If we want God's blessings in our lives, we should learn to become more generous like God. And this is ultimately the most of it. People that they 
people that think that the people that have made it in life most of the time operate in this purpose. They will work and give everything that they have. They will do their best to make sure that they go out to reach the people that are less fortunate because they understand this principle. Proverbs 11, 11 verse 25, it says that the generals will prosper. He who refreshes others will, he, will himself be refreshed. In Acts 20, verse 35, Paul says that we can help those in need by working hard. He reminds us that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So hard work is not an option. When we say we believe in Christ, we need to understand that laziness is not in the vocabulary of God. We therefore need to stand out in terms of how hard we work. And most important part is we should not only want to work for ourselves because when you work for yourself, it becomes an issue when you do not want to make, wake up. Because you can say, uh, I can starve. But if you work for a higher purpose, you realize that you've got more responsibilities. So there are certain things that cannot happen if you are not there. And the same applies to those that are in need. The last purpose for work is that we need to fulfill the Great Commission. Like I explained that we spend over 40% of our time at work. A workplace therefore becomes an ideal opportunity for us to do this. And if we fail to do this part in our workplace, then where are we going to be able to do it? The Bible says that God wants us to rest but he also wants us to work. So there has to be a balance between work and rest. So if we want to really work for him, the place where he has placed us is where we need to do the work for him. In fact, God doesn't call all believers to become full-time pastors because then they will not have any church to pastor. But he calls every believer to be a witness and a minister. You see, when you are a witness, you don't need to do a lot of things. When they call you in court, I'm giving an example, to come and witness, they just ask you what you saw. And the question is, does people see God in us, in our workplaces? Does people see a reason to believe that we are Christian? Or maybe I might ask this question in a different way. Has someone ever asked you, what is it that you believe in? Has someone ever asked you about your faith? simply because you handle things differently from the rest of the people. And if the answer is no, it's on the higher purpose, but we can still continuously work on it. I believe that God has scattered us into these dark places called workplace so that we can shine our light in such a way that people will want to know about Christ. In Matthew 6, verse 20, Jesus advises all believers to store up treasures in heaven. I try to check if there is a bank account where I can start depositing my money so that when I go to heaven, I will get it. And unfortunately, it's not there. It basically means that the only way for us to invest in heaven is by getting more people saved. And the only way to get more people saved is by making sure that where we spend most of our time at, we use that opportunity to get those that do not know Christ to become friends with Christ as well. Matthew 6, verse 33, it says that be concerned above everything else. The key word is above everything else with the kingdom of God and with what he requires from you. And he will provide you with all these other things. I will read it again. Be concerned above everything else with the kingdom of God and with what he requires from you. And he will provide you with all these other things. The question is, what is it that he requires from us?
I want us to probably explain this verse in this way. Um, I'm going to ask that we imagine this, we close our eyes, we imagine that this is the judgment day. We are sitting before God and he's making a judgment on us. He's asking us or he's asking you and me, what is it that I did with what he has given me? The answer that I'm going to give him and the answer that I want him to hear from me. I'll give everyone a minute for that. Thank you. The thought or the answer that you have determines how far you are from what he has given you. I'll open a scripture from 1 Corinthians 3, verse 15. It says that on the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The builder is referring to us. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer a great loss and lose rewards. The question is, will we be able to, will our work survive the fire? And this question is very much simple. It says that this is on the judgment day. The good thing is we will already be in heaven. The bad thing is we will lose the rewards. It means that we will not be able to enjoy ourselves because we will not have any rewards. Therefore, the good works that we do each and every day is building up rewards for us in heaven. And therefore, our work should speak volume. I want to conclude that while we are at work, Jesus is working on us. When Christ is working in our lives, we begin to desire the things of God, not the things of this world. Therefore, our motivation for work should not to get that nice car, should not be to get that very nice house. Our purpose should be in line with those six purposes of God. Unfortunately, we are not going to take our car to heaven. We're not going to take our career to heaven. We're not going to take anything else apart from our character. It is therefore important that whatever motive that we have for work is in line with what we want to see at the end of our movie. Most people don't realize how important their work is. And the Bible says it doesn't matter what it is. Some person might say, I'm just a cleaner. But the Bible doesn't specify what type of job it is. It says, whatever you do. I believe that our work is a higher call from God. It is not meant only for just to provide for basic needs and give some money here and there. I believe that our work is an opportunity for us to express who we are. When we read Genesis 2, verse 15, it says that when God placed Adam in the Garden of Eden, he said to him, work, which means you must become, you must reveal yourself. It means, therefore, that our purpose for work should be about revealing who we truly are, because God has made us in that way for a special work that he, only he knows. Our work should not be a transactional process where we exchange labor and time for money, but it should be a transformational process, a testing ground where we build a Christ-like character. It should be a place where we become witness to others. It should be a place where we attain resources so that we can help those in need. 
and build the kingdom of God. We are all different and we were all born with different gifts. What do you think your gift is? And how can you use it to benefit the kingdom of God? If you understand that you were born to do something and you know that at the end of the day you will be judged based on how you used whatever you were given, I think that it's only fair that you want to do something because all of us do not want to fail. And this is the biggest exam that we can ever take. I think that with what the culture has taught us and what the Bible teaches us, it's quite contradicting. And it becomes difficult because we live in an environment that does not allow us to do that. I believe that we can all make difference. I believe that we can all live a fulfilling life if we do the work which we were born to do. I've been very fortunate to see a lot of people doing what they were born to do. And the joy that comes in out of it, it's out of this world. I'm not sure those that probably, um, if I, I use an example here, if, if, if you've seen what happens when Mel sings, you will realize that there is something that just happens. For those that watch football, if you look what happens when Messi play football, you will see that this is something that he can do each and every day. Let us go back to a place where we bring love to the job that we do. Let us go back to the place where we find joy because in eternity, if we don't make it happen now, unfortunately, nothing much is going to change.